So you want to post your 3D models and maybe even your cool 3D selfies like this one on Facebook. Well, you're in luck because I'm going to show you how. Now, Facebook uses a very strange format called GLB. Well, maybe it's not that strange, but it has some limitations and it requires that we use a process of getting our 3D model into uh, this format, which can then be uploaded to Facebook. So I'm going to show you two ways or, well, it's almost three ways. But the easiest way is that we don't use any textures or any, any color at all. We're just going to use one color and that, that's the most easy way and that's what you can get going like really fast with. And then we'll also scratch the surface on some of the more advanced stuff like the selfie you just saw. But the selfie is going to require a bit more work to get done. Uh, at least for now, hopefully when you see this video in 2034, it's going to be much easier. So with that said, let's head into the computer and start doing some cat stuff. Before we convert any of the SDL or OBG files that we find, we need to make sure that we comply with Facebook's rules. So there's a very narrow uh, file size of around three megabytes that you can upload to the Facebook tool, otherwise it won't, won't work at all. So um, that means that the SDL files, when, when I create a SDL file, um, I count that that's around 120,000 uh, triangles. So a quick way to check that, if you're like for me using Fusion 360, is that we go into um, the export tool. As soon as you click here on make, we can 3D print and then we can um, make sure that we have the preview mesh and then I click some on one of the objects that I want to export and then we see that this one here is around 21,000. These are a lot of different bodies so what we can do instead is that we just go and right click on this one, we'll click save as STL and we get the same settings but now for everything in the scene which includes all the letters which we, we want to have in the scene. So after that loaded we can see that this my particular scene is a 119,000. So that's going to be totally fine. So I'll just click save as, then we can just name it something random. And although Fusion 360 and all other software can handle a lot larger files, the tool that we're going to use first, which is Vectory, they warn you at around 100,000 triangles. So you want to keep it low, keep it the smaller the better, especially if you want to have color, which we'll go into later, you want to have really tiny models. So after that, we'll go to the website vectory.com. And here you can just sign in with the Google or Facebook, make a free account. Then we'll just start creating. So I'm just going to click here and start create. Next up, we want to go up to the menu. You can do some like modeling and stuff here if you want to learn that later. But what we're going to want to do is the fastest way to get a 3D model on Facebook is to click on the menu on the top left corner. We'll click import. Here we can now drag or uh, load our models and we can dra drag in my random SDL file in here. Now it warns me that I have 119,000 faces. Recommended number is 100,000. But I know that this is going to work so that's why I said around 120,000. So I'm going to try anyway. It's going to load a little bit. There we go. Before we do anything it's important that I understand that Vector isn't really good for these sharp pointy models that, that I have here. Um, there is something called smoothing which makes all the surfaces a little bit more smooth. Um, let's see, so, so they, they will kind of round everything off. It doesn't show here but I'll show you very shortly um, what, what can happen. However, Vector is really good for when it comes to more organic models, rounded models and stuff like that. So um, anyway, what you want to go ahead and do is that you go to the color picker and you see this smooth threshold here, you want to turn that down as much as possible because that's going to help when you take it into, into Facebook. You can play around a little bit with this if you have very smooth shapes, let's say a, a 3D scan of yourself or something, um, you can leave that at 40. But for my very sharp models, you, I don't want to change that value at all. We can change the color here if you want to have something else. Let's say I want to go with uh, a green model or bluish. We can also change the, the feel here of the material a little bit, make it shiny, uh, make some patterns on it if we want to have some noise, maybe a wooden uh, oak material, which looks weird because I don't have any like mapping on this model. Uh, but you could have it like this if you want to. Again, I'm going to go with salt in matte, flat color and some sort of bluey. Okay, and when we're done with that, we need to orientate our model. So uh, when your Facebook viewer is going to look at the model first, so whatever points in, the in, direction, in their direction first, you want to make sure that the, uh, the y-axis, which is the green, goes into the screen because that's how it's going to be looked at for the person. So y is going to be inside the screen, x, uh, sorry, c should be up, the blue one, and x should be to the right. 
then, then you know everything's uh, working out as it should. So my model is orientated as it should. You can see the, the green, the blue and the red axis here, which shows that it's correct. So after that, all we have to do is go back to export. So up in the menu on left, export 3D model. And hey, you can even see it blinking over here. So we'll just export this for GLB. So we now download the file. You can see I've tried a lot here. So this is number 14. So let's go to my profile like this. And what you want to do is that, well, it's in Swedish, so sorry about that. So what we can do now is that we can click here. So we want to activate the window and then we'll just drag this in, release it. It's going to load a little bit. You can also change your privacy settings if you also want to test it out a little bit and make sure that you get everything right. Ta-da, we got a result. So here you see what I meant with the whole uh, shading difficulty. So this is what we get with uh, Vectory. I'm going to show you a more difficult way, but uh, which makes it a much more sharper. I'll, I'll show you guys a picture very shortly. Um, so yeah, so this works and this is a great way to get started and uh, yeah, make sure you visit this URL as well. You can even change here some backgrounds. So let's say we want to have some different random colors. I don't know why you would that, but yeah, maybe you want. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe some of these looks good. Yeah, and then of course you can do everything you want to type in and stuff like normal. So this also looks very cool in mobile. I'll show you guys that in a second. So that's how you do with Invectory, the free software, which you can also do some modeling in. Um, that's the easiest way. But now if we have something a little bit more complicated, we want to have these really sharp edges, like most CAD models might want to have. Uh, I'm going to suggest that we use a tool called Blender, which is free. But if you have, we can also use 3D Studio Max, which is not free. But if you're a student or you have a license, um, I'm going to show you a way of doing that. I'm going to show you how you do it in Blender because that's free. If you want to learn how to do it in 3D Studio Max with textures and with all that, I'm going to link down the article down below. Or you can check out the link that I just showed you in 3D. So antonmanson.com slash Facebook 3D. Now, um, so let's get started again. This is Blender. So you want to install Blender. You want to also install a tool called the Verge 3D. But I'll show you that in a second. And again, everything's down in the link if you want to follow along yourself. So we want to start off by going to Soft8Soft, which is a website where Verge 3D is located. So you can see here, we can find it for 3D Studio Max and for Blender. So in this case, we're going to use Blender because it's all free. So you can download here, 2.3 in, in this case. There is a great tutorial somewhere around here on the user manual to install this. But I'm going to do the quick one and also you'll find all the links down below. So the first thing that you want to do, of course, is install Blender. And when that's done, we want to go into a folder like this one and unzip the the verge 3 folder so we got it we got that open and then we'll open blender we'll go to file user preferences we'll go to the tab that is called file and in here we can also find scripts i've already preloaded this one but i'm gonna show you where uh, where you can find it so just copy this link put in here there we go we'll open this folder and then we'll just click uh, accept. So go. Now it's very important that you also save the, the user folder. And when that's done, we actually need to restart Blender. Get that started again. Here we go. Now we want, need to go into the user preference again. And you want to go into add-ons. And in here you can find something called Verge 3D. It's all the way down in the bottom. But it's there. So again, if we take our 3D model. So I'm going to put the SDL file in here as well. And we are going to copy this link. We'll go to File in Blender. We'll import an SDL file. Go to that same folder. We'll click on that SDL file. We'll import it. Now it doesn't matter if the uh, SDL file is much bigger. It's only the GLB format. The GLB file that can't be bigger than 3 megabytes. So we'll click on Import. Uh, again, we might need to scale a little bit around here. So let's just scale it down. It's, it's on this floor. We can also see that it's correctly orientated, which I did before as well. So the Y, the green axis, is going positive into the screen. Um, yeah, with that, we can... Something that future Anton needs to update you on is that we need to go over here on the material. And since this is blank, that won't show up on Facebook posts. You need to have some sort of basic material. Uh, we're just going to click on this one to create a material and that's all we need to do. And that's it. Now we're ready to export but it. All we really need to do here is that we'll click export. 
will export a Verge or even a uh, Facebook GLB. So you can take either the binary that is point GLB or the Facebook GLB. I'm gonna go with the Facebook one. Again, we'll take the same folder and we're gonna call it uh, random.glb and click export. There we go. And now we go back in here, we can check out this fo file format, um, but it's way too big. That's not good. So if your file is too big, which is, is for me, there's a few tools that you can use inside of Blender to reduce the mesh. So we can go into the modifiers. We'll click on modifier. We'll click on something called decimates. So we know the file was around uh, nine megabytes. So maybe we should reduce it by uh, 0.3 then. So we'll just click on, on collapse here, 0.3. Let's see how that looks. That looks super nice. We can even go lower. Let's say 0. Uh, 0. 0.2 doesn't make any real changes to the model. Um, we just have a lot less faces. So we'll click apply on that and then we'll go ahead and do exactly the same thing again, export. We'll export the Facebook GLB. We'll call this GLB smallest. Oh, so now we're down to 1.9 megabytes. And I'm going to drag it in here again. This is a Blender file. There we go. So uh, you can see now here what I mean with the whole polygon model. So I'm gonna send this, make sure that you know, just me can see it. I didn't make any background. So with this one from Vectory, there are some shading issues, at least when I released this movie, um, but you can change color, you can do some with the materials. It's much better for smooth models, maybe sculptures and stuff like that. And the Blender way, which is a little bit more tricky, you can get these sharp, uh, really sharp, nice models uh, on. I think it's a bet better shading. There you go, there's how we do it in the, in those two file formats. And there's a small bonus as well. So if you we wanna do it in 3D Studio Max, I'm just gonna show you very quickly how it's done. It's also with the Verge 3D plugin that you saw me download for Blender. I'm gonna list all of this, how we do it in download alone in, in the article, but here we go. So this, so in 3D Studio Max, we're also going to use the Verge plugin. So we just download that from the same site where we downloaded everything from Blender, I'll link down below. And in this case, I'm gonna use the scan of myself. I've reduced it heavily. So it only includes like around 12,000 polygons. All we really have to do then is make sure that on, in our materials, we have a PBM, so a physically based material. I have not put any effort at all into making this material here. It's gonna be okay, reasonable. And also we need to make sure that we have the texture size um, very low, otherwise we're gonna reach the three megabytes limit of Facebook very quickly. Anyways, I'm not gonna bother you enough with that. Uh, we then click on Verge, we'll export the selected model into Facebook GLB. Let's call it Colorized Anton. Go back into Facebook, find that file, make yet another post and drag it in. So it's gonna load and yeah, uh, the, the material, I should probably put a little bit more time into the reflectiveness and the strength of the material but yeah basically this is how it works so this is the, how you get a color model in and there are some good guides I'll, I'll probably write a little bit more about how you can do that a, a more st step by step but yeah i don't want to bore you because this video is getting way too long so let's just finish this here make sure you check the link down below there's a bunch of more information you can read it a little bit slower and see some examples as well and of course if you want to make your own facebook 3d tags Make sure that you hashtag them, hashtag 3DPTD, so 3D Print Tech Design, so I can see it and I can enjoy it and like it. So um, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed some really cool Facebook 3D modeling, not modeling, but 3D uh, pictures. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.